One Piece chapter 820 review. This is a really good chapter, in my opinion. Now, I'll talk about things like always. I think I'm going to start off with Nami in this chapter. Nami in this chapter was great. I love how she acts. Uh, I think it was Neko Mamushi, but she asked about, you know, how when Crockett defined it, he was like, you'll take all these different routes and routes in the Grand Line, and then they'll all connect into one. And that single point is Rastel. Now, I love how that came back full circle, but now, and he was pretty much like, yes, that is true, but you need to gather all this into, you need to do this and this and this for it to be able to get to that point, and it was just, it was great. I loved it. Now, another thing I loved was how uh, they praised Nami's skill with the Navigator. I loved the panel, her reaction to that was great. It was pretty much, you were just like, like, embarrassed. I couldn't really tell. The, Nami's normally very boastful about that, so it was interesting to see the character written in a way like that, where she kind of actually, like, you know, like, she's embarrassed about the compliment over the fact that this is one of the Pirate King crew. Like, you know, I don't think Nami would be embarrassed if, let's say, some random guy said that to her. But this is one of the big guys sailed with Roger. I mean, him saying you're a good navigator is a big, big deal. It is. And he's pretty much saying you are capable of doing this. But that was great. Uh, there was a lot of great comedy in this chapter. One of my personal favorites was when, uh, when, they, when they were dumping all the information and Usopp was like, Wait, wait, you're going too fast for me. I loved it. That was freaking great. And now, even better than that, even better than that was when we uh we finally figured out what's going to happen with the Sanji rescue arc. We had the premise. I believe we had the premise for it. So we know the team we got. We have Peckham, Luffy, Nami, and Chopper. Nami and Chopper haven't really done anything since the time. Get Nami done like one or two things. She had her moment in a uh, punk hazard, but punk hazard was a long ass time ago. So it doesn't really make up for it. Chopper had a couple moments in punk hazard, but aside for that, and and her and Nami also had her moment with Usopp when they took down uh Baby Five. Well they tried to and failed, but you know what I mean. The point is is that this is a big deal. In more ways than one, because this is going to be the chance for Nami and Chopper to really show off what they can do. Especially Nami, because Nami had open he said to Luffy in this chapter, I'm going with you. I feel responsible for what happened to Sanji. Now, well, I don't necessarily see why Nami how she responsible in any way for it. She had nothing to do with it. But the point is is that because Nami wants to stay Sanji, because she feels responsible, it means she's probably going to take it more seriously. Meaning hopefully we won't get any of that Usopp type comedy that her Usopp normally get. Where they're like, oh, I'm too scared. And then all out of nowhere, they're just like, no, now you've insulted my captain, so I have the courage to kick your ass. I hate that. I always have. Usopp and Nami. I've always had a problem with that because it's just like out of nowhere, they just become, they just become braver, which doesn't make any sense. Many people have had problems with Chopper monster point post time skip. I agree. I feel like it used to be this really badass thing, and Oda kind of took away from that because of, you know, what he did. Because of, you know, making Chopper have control and do all the cute stuff in it. The cute stuff is fine. I get it. Chopper, the cute guy. Uh, like, in Japan, Oda makes a lot of money off of, like, like a teenage girl buying Chopper stuff. And, he, and, and guys as well, there's a lot of people buying Chopper stuff. He's the cute. He's the mascot. I get it. But it also does get to the point where, like, Oda, this is Chopper's powerful form. I want to see him be a monster in his monster point once again. But, you know, some people disagree with that. But, and some, but most people agree. But what I do want to talk about here is really something interesting that I noticed in this chapter. So, a big thing that I noticed while reading this is Momonosuke at one point said, I have met Roger before. I'm paraphrasing, but he directly said, what he said pretty much means he met Roger before. And the second I thought it, why my live reaction? I was like, wait, 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 what? No, no, no. That doesn't make any sense. You're like, freaking what? Eight years old? What the hell? That's stupid. You, there's no way in hell. Momonoke is eight years old. Like, eight or something. Ten at the most. Probably younger than eight, possibly. The point is, is that 
Is he that age and Roger died 20 years ago? What is he talking about? And then in the next panel, it was either Nekamamushi or Inorachi said, I forgot who, but one of them said, we will tell, we will one day tell the entire story or something like that. Paraphrasing once again. But when I saw that, I was just thinking, whoa, that's weird. That is weird. But who knows? But, you know, like, what are they hiding? Is there something, it, it, is the possibility of Roger being alive a little bit higher now? I doubt it. I think that may be a, a mistranslation. We'll have to wait until Monday to, uh, find out when the official translation comes down on the D-Jump. But the point is, is that a lot of stuff happened in this chapter. Now, I do want to quickly mention, just to fight my good friend Fist Son, and I quote, You're not needed, Brooke. Just saying, you Brooke fanboy, come at me, because Brooke is useless as hell. I have a discussion video I plan on making this weekend about it. Oh, by the way, I knew I'll talk about it at the end of the video, whatever. But, uh, a lot of stuff is coming, but really, back to the review, this chapter is great. It's amazing. I, I just, I only know what to say about it. It was such an information dump. Now, I have to say the biggest thing in this chapter would be the ending, where the whole the place started shaking. Now, I want to point out a possibility. I want to point out one thing. It, w it was, the term quake was used. I never felt a quake like this. And what is the English name of Whitebeard Devil Fruit? The Quake Quake Fruit, who is the current eater of the Quake Quake Fruit? Blackbeard. Now, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing that information out there. But you never know. That may, may or may not be important. Uh, who knows? I assume it's Jack. I'm just pointing out that I made that connection. When I saw a Quake, I was like, Blackbeard? Nah, probably Jack. But now, I, of course, need to talk about the elephant in the room. This is probably the biggest fanboy thing in the chapter. Marco to seen it. We get info on the White Beard Pirate. So let's talk about that before I end the review. Okay, first and foremost, Marco and the White Beard Pirate about a year after the War of the Best, I believe. Because, yeah, it was one year ago, and it was two year time scheduling. Yeah, a year after the War of the Best, Marco and the remains of the White Beard Pirate challenged the Black Beard Pirate to battle, and they were defeated. This was when. Blackbeard became, started to become known as one of the Yonko. Now, this is very important information, guy. Very important. And if you're wondering why, I will explain. This is very important because of the fact that the Minx were talking, they said they, a strong ally they could get was Marco the Phoenix. Because, as I also talk about, Iner, Inarachi and Nekamamuchi were aboard Roger's ship as well because they were the Taylor Retainer of Odin, who was a member of the Roger Pirate, Kitty Moan and the Samurai and tried to convince him not to do it. They were like, Odin was like, no, I want to join this guy, because Roger personally asked him to join the crew. Which was a big deal. But so what happened here that I love is that we got to introduce two members, but they would be equivalent to like Buggy and Jake. They're not that important, you know what I mean? But so, it was stated in the chapter that they had met Whitebeard and Roger when they arrived on the now, I want to talk about this. Why were Whitebeard and Roger traveling together? Maybe they had an alliance? I don't know. Video on that another time. I'll probably make a video about that this weekend, next week. But, yeah, but that's really good news. But one thing I want to talk about mainly in this review, but the most, is that the, the Nekamamuchi and Inarashi, because of their connected to Roger and Whitebeard, Having been aboard both the Oral Jackson uh, built by Frankie Master, which Frankie brings up, and the Moby Dick, the ship of the Whitebeard Pirate, they know Marco, and they were like, we need a powerful ally, let's go to Marco the Phoenix. So yeah, we're gonna get Marco reintroduced. This, and remember, we built after Marco, so that will probably tie back into that, which is awesome. But yeah, this, this whole chapter, this thing is amazing, I'm really hyped. Very excited for the next week. Well, there is no chapter next week, actually, unfortunately. But, yeah, which is unfortunate. But, if I had to rate the chapter, I would... I would give it a 10 out of 10. It, it was... It gave us a ton of information. It progressed the story. It set up... It set up the Sanji stuff. And it had a great cliffhanger. The art was on point. And it was, it was an amazing arc. It was... Not arc. Chapter. And I do feel the arc could come into an end. But, yeah, I would give it a 10 out of 10. I hope you guys enjoyed the video.
please like the video if you enjoyed, and remember to comment and subscribe for more videos. And remember, above all else, and more importantly than anything, have a great day.